What's up guys, Jaber right here, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Crossout, hope you guys are doing well, today we are finally doing a weapon tier list, it's been 3 years since I did the last one and this one was highly requested, but before we start with the tier list, I wanted to thank you guys for commenting and making me feel a little bit better in my other video where I was kind of feeling down because of my channel wasn't really growing and you know, all kind of sad and stuff so thank you for that thank you for commenting and thank you for the support that is really 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 appreciated i'm still not sure what i'm gonna do because last night i checked all three channels Suslet gaming three burgers and setios all three channels were pretty solid cross out creators three burgers had the thumbnails and titles down he was like the master in that and all of them slowly tried to transition away from cross out to other content and once they fully stopped their channels completely died and that is exactly what i was referring to in the other video it's a it's a scary thought it's a very scary thought anyways let's start off with the tier list so i'm gonna do this in two parts this is part one where i'll do common weapons rare weapons and specials and in part two we'll do epics legendary and relics we have a lot of epics so that's why that's gonna take a little bit longer for our first weapon we have the lm54 cord machine gun and believe it or not this thing was so powerful it actually got nerfed <laughs> But it is still pretty good. The pros are it does a decent amount of damage for a common weapon and it only drains two energy. And for cons, well, it doesn't have a lot of durability. That's pretty much it. The cords are so good. I even played them at 10,000 power score and even got to defeat players with relics and stuff like that. The cord is really good if you have the right build, of course. I even did a video where I played nothing but cords, the Ermac cabin when it was still super strong and the Omomori when it was still super strong. That's it, no other modules, just Quartz, Ermac Cabin, Omomori, and I still slap people around. For me personally, the Quartz gets a C rating because it is capable of a lot of fun. Next up, we have the Lupara Shotgun. This shotgun is one of the earliest you can get. It's pretty bad. Now the pros are this thing is really small, so it's easy to hide around your build or under your build. And it also does a decent amount of damage. But speaking of damage, the con is you need to be close to deal that damage. And another con is its durability. It doesn't have a lot of durability, only 63. So overall, this shotgun is actually pretty bad. But people have been using builds like these with the Luparas. Huygen Cabin put four Luparas under a build and almost impossible to kill, especially against new players. The first thing the Crossout tutorial teaches you is to go for the enemy's weapon. Well, good luck with that if they're hidden so well under the build. And because of that build alone, the Lupara also gets a C rating for me, which is means it's capable of some fun. If you don't use it on a build like that, you will struggle a little bit. Next up, we have the Avenger 57mm cannon, which is also a common part. This cannon is nothing great, you know, it's a common part, but they did buff it recently. They reduced its energy drain, so now it uses 4 energy instead of 5, so that means this is the only cannon where you can mount 4 cannons on one build that is not a Leviathan. Now, one of the cool things about this cannon is basically a pro is the fire rate. It fires really, really fast. The cons obviously being it has very low durability and very low damage output. But with the right setup, if you have four of these on your build, you can actually have a lot of fun. For example, with the Catalina cabin or the Hadron cabin. And even with four of these on your build, you don't really need a reload module because the reload itself is already that quick. And because of that feature alone as well, this thing gets a C rating for me as well because it is capable of some fun. And that's pretty much it for the common weapons. There are only three common weapons for some reason but yeah let's continue to the rare weapon starting off with the stm23 defender machine gun now the defender machine gun is probably one of the oldest weapons in the game and also one of the first weapons you get access to it is only a rare weapon so it's nothing special for pros it does get a decent amount of durability 177 and it does a decent amount of damage now one of the obvious cards is it is a limited angle firing weapon so you can only shoot a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and if you want to shoot someone behind you you gotta turn your whole build around and crossout has some annoying physics where people can just get stuck on you or wet you so if that happens you're pretty much screwed when using this thing so for me the defender machine gun also gets a c rating it is capable of fun but it's nothing special next up we have the vector machine gun which is very similar to the defender machine gun the one we checked out before this one but it can fire in all direction and because of that its durability is also a lot less only at 81 durability points if i had to list the pros of the vector machine gun i would say the energy usage is pretty low at three energy accuracy is pretty good it has good range it has a good fire rate damage is decent and the throat rotation speed is also pretty fast if you've never tried using five of these on a fast moving build try it out you'll have a ton of fun <laughs> <laughs> the only big con I have is its durability because when I used 5, your power score goes really high 
and you start dealing with builds that deal too much damage for the vector. So for me, the vector is capable of fun, so it gets a C rating for me. It used to be a little bit better, but not anymore. Next up, we have the Sledgehammer Shotgun, the upgrade from the Lupara Shotgun. This one deals a lot more damage, has pretty decent durability. Energy Drain is also 3, and it pretty much kept the same size of the Lupara, but it is a little bit bigger than the Lupara, just a slight bit. For new players, this is a pretty good shotgun to get. They don't have a ton of durability, but they're easy enough to hide. The biggest con for me is you still have to go pretty close to your target to deal some damage. But other than that, it's a pretty solid shotgun, so it gets a C rating for me as well. It is capable of some fun. Next up, we have the Spitfire Shotgun. This one used to be my favorite shotgun in the game because even for a rare weapon, you could still bring it up to 10,000 bar score and slap all those kits over there. This thing was so good, so, so good. But then the devs decided to nerf all the parameters of the weapon, so everything got nerfed besides the durability. Durability is the only thing that's great about this thing. But the range got nerfed, the damage got nerfed, the accuracy got nerfed, and it's just not a great weapon anymore. So for me, it gets a C rating as well. It is still capable of fun, but it's nothing special anymore. Don't worry, guys, not everything is going to be a C rating for me. <laughs> We're getting to the good stuff. Next up, we have the AC-43 Rapier Auto Cannon. And out of all the blue weapons, the rare weapons, this one is the one I use the least. Because it is not a hit scan weapon, and the projectiles do take a while before they get to the target. But if you can land your shots, the Rapier is not a bad auto cannon. As you can see, the stats are all pretty high, and I've used four without any other module, and it still held up pretty good. It's just, you know, it really depends on your uh, accuracy. And that is basically the only con for this thing, but if you've mastered the aiming, you're gonna have a ton of fun because it has explosive damage, DPS is actually pretty good as well, fire rate is good, effective range is good, accuracy is yeah, it's kind of in the middle there. It actually takes a long time before it overheats without any help of modules. And the durability is quite nice as well. And the AC-43 gets a C rating as well because it's nothing special, <laughs> you know? It is capable of fun, that's, that's where all these weapons are about. They are capable of fun, but if you bring them too high, you will get shredded. Next up, we have the little boy, the 6 LB. This thing, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but four years ago, this thing used to be a monster. Everything was perfect about this thing, but it was too effective for the devs. So they nerfed its convergence time, its accuracy and accuracy while moving. Man, this thing became so, so bad. And even though they removed the dependency of your accuracy from your speed, it's still really, really bad. I don't have anything positive to say about the little boy. The durability looks decent, but trust me, in PvP, 422 will just disappear in one blink of an eye. This thing is a terrible, terrible weapon. So I would say don't waste your money on it. It gets a D rating. It is really, really bad. Next up, we have the Judge 76 millimeter. Now, this one is a little bit different. Even though you cannot rotate your turret fully, like the little boy, also you can do that with the little boy. This one can only fire forward with very little traverse to the left and right. But even if you don't use omnidirectional movement park, this thing is so much fun. So the pros for me for this thing is the reload is kind of nice. It is really accurate, decent amount of damage, and it only uses five energy so you can mount three of them on your build. The cons are obviously it has a limited firing angle. And if you're not using it on omnidirectional movement part, you're going to struggle a little bit, but it's not impossible to have fun with this thing. So the Judge 76 millimeter also gets a C rating for me. It is capable of a lot of fun because cannons and crossbows just struggle a little bit more compared to other weapons. Next up, we have the Wasp Rocket Launcher, one of the earliest rocket launchers you get access to because it is a rare item. This thing is uh, very fragile. If someone spits at it, it usually falls off. So you usually have to build around it, like a box around it, or mount it under your creation. It also has a limited firing angle, which makes it a lot harder to use. And the rockets are also not that accurate, which is also pretty annoying. So this thing has a lot of things working against it. It's not horrible or something, but it has a lot of things working against it. It's durability, the inaccurate rockets, the limited firing angle, and the damage is not something to write home about either. It's just, you know, yeah, that's okay. The only good thing about the Wasp is it reloads super duper quick. So that's basically the trade-off. You trade off all those cool things, rotation speed and all those things for a super fast reload speed. But, you know, I don't think that's worth it. So I would say don't waste your money on the wasp. Get something else where you can have a lot more fun. Next up, we're skipping a lot of categories here and we're going to the borer, a melee weapon. The borer is probably one of the most hated weapons at the lower bar score. I've played it. It is pretty nasty. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty fun. It is pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. Only drains two energy. The durability is pretty nice as well. 231. It also has special features like resistance to blast damage, resistance to melee and ram damage, and bonus to ram damage. So 
This thing is a nasty, nasty melee weapon. And I would say as a new player, definitely pick a pair up. So for me, this is the first rare weapon that gets a B rating from me. It is better than the rest here, but it's not amazing yet. You can have so much fun with this thing. So, so much fun. And all these weapons are going to struggle to deal with you. <laughs> Next up, we have a drone, the 8012 Falcon. This is the drone that follows you around with one machine gun. And that's basically the con as well. It follows you around, so it's pretty easy to take out. Damage wise, it's nothing amazing. And, you know, they're pretty easy to take out. Unless someone is distracted, you won't be able to do much with this thing. One of the advantages you kind of have is you can deploy them and then cloak up. And people will have a harder time seeing you and drive around them. That's that's only cool thing you can do but you're gonna be so close to the target they'll see your cloak silhouette anyway so i don't know i don't think these are great for me i would say don't waste your money on it you can get something a lot more fun next up we have another drone this is a dt cobra this one is the one you deploy on the ground and you can deploy it anywhere you want so you can basically set up a perimeter they're nothing special they're really great at annoying your teammates because you can get your teammates stuck on them but other than that they're not that amazing you know deal a little bit of damage but you know nothing special another cool thing about them they only use three energy so you can potentially bring five of them but yeah they're they're nothing special so same thing with this one unless you want to know your teammates i would say don't waste your money gets a d rating for me all right now we're done with all the rear weapons and now we're moving on to the special weapons okay we're starting off with the guardian machine gun i like the way this one looks because it has like a rim on top <laughs> that's basically the only thing i like about it damage is okay fire rate is okay Effective range is not the best. Accuracy is not great either. Durability is nice and it only uses three energy and it has a pretty cool perk, but it is a limited firing angle weapon. And in my opinion, these weapons struggle a lot in cross out. Now, this one is basically the upgraded version of the Defender machine gun, but I still think it sucks. So for me, it goes to, yep, C rating. It's capable of fun, but it sucks. <laughs> it's not that great. Next up, we have the M37 Rapid Fire Machine Gun. This thing can deal so much damage in such a short time, but the trade-off is it doesn't have a lot of durability, only 138. It used to be a little bit more, but this thing was so effective, so they nerfed it a little bit. Now, since the Piercer has such low durability, you want to use them on fast-moving builds that can dip in and out of combat. However, Chameleon has just a really good build. Not, it doesn't have to be super beefy, just fast enough to drive around your target, make them miss their shots while you deal massive damage you do need to be a little bit close though that's that's one big red flag for this thing you do need to be a little bit close so that's why i recommend having a fast build but the piercer is a great weapon the piercer is really great so it gets a b rating for me where is this bad boy yeah b rating this thing is really good it's uh, not amazing but it is pretty good next up we have the sinus machine gun the bigger bro of the vector machine gun and remember how i told you you can run five of these and have a lot of fun being super accurate well, this thing is even better because it gets a perk. <laughs> it can basically get 20% more damage for two seconds. So that's that's massive for this thing. And like I mentioned for the vector that every parameter was great besides the durability. Same thing here, but just much better. So for me, the sinus is a solid pick. So it gets a B rating for me as well. Next up, we have another weapon that was super strong three years ago. This thing was god tier. I don't remember the player's name, but he used to run nothing but goblin build. This thing used to be <laughs> such a monster, man. Hovers, ground builds, anything could work with the goblins. But again, you know, the devs nerfed it. Oh, it's no longer that great. Now the bigger bro is great, the gremlin. But we're going to talk about that one later. So the goblin shotgun is a very unique weapon. It can only shoot forward. It does have a little bit of a shooting angle left and right, but I believe it's only five degree, not that much. And it basically is a weapon that you can mount inside your build. It also gets some special features. It has resistance to melee damage and ram damage. It lets damage through and it gets 200% bonus to ram damage. So basically you can use this thing to ram as well. What's also quite unique about this thing is it's a special weapon that only uses two energy. You only get 128 durability, but since this is a weapon you need to hide in your build, it's actually not that bad. And the DPS is also pretty good. I believe the Goblin Shotgun is mostly used at the lower posh code with the Bastion Cabin or Hugin Cabin to bully new players, but that's the only place it is really effective because new players kind of struggle to deal with this thing. So I would say the Goblin Shotgun is capable of fun. Get to C rating for me. Ah yes, the Jungbo Shotgun. Man, this thing used to be so cool when it first came out. It's a reloading shotgun. Basically, you shoot once, shoots a bunch of junk, it reloads, and then you can shoot again. Reload is pretty decent. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but the biggest issue with this thing, you need to be really, really, really close to your target in order to deal a little bit of damage. Or actually, you deal a decent amount of damage. And that's why the durability is so high. You need to be basically 
licking their forehead to uh, deal some damage. Otherwise, your shots are just going to miss. So according to this graph here, it says the damage is high, but it's decent at best. It's nothing amazing. One of the biggest issue with these types of shotguns is their hitbox. They are massive. And usually the only way you can play them is to have them exposed on top of your build or again built around it. But then your build becomes so weird and blocky. So eh, these are just rough, man. These are in a really rough spot. All of them are, all the rarities. So I would say don't waste your money on the jogging bow, man. You're going to struggle and suffer. They are, they could be fun, but rarely. Next up, we have the mace shotgun, an upgrade from the sledgehammer shotgun. This one has the benefit of being super small as well, and it only uses three energy. Damage wise is also pretty good, and it also gets a perk. You can get up to 40% extra damage when the perk is active. But you still need to be super close to the target to deal that damage. Not as close as the junk bow shotgun, but still pretty close. Luckily, these are small enough, just like the sledgehammer shotgun, to hide around your build. They are pretty good for what you get. So it gets a B rating for me. Next up, we have a very underrated shotgun, the lead shotgun. I believe this one is not that popular because it's an event only item so you need to wait for the knight rider event to be able to craft them otherwise you need to buy them off the market but the damage is pretty good fire rate is good the range again you know it's a shotgun and a, the durability is also quite nice but again it suffers from that limited firing angle syndrome so it's that's a, basically the only thing that hurts this thing but it is a pretty good shotgun so the leech gets a b rating for me as well it is really really good but you know it's not amazing oh yeah look at this icon this is a Knight Riders event only item or Raven's Pad. Next up, we're moving to the Term Auto Cannon. I recently had so much fun with this thing. This thing has a super fast fire rate. It is pretty accurate for an auto cannon and the damage is not that bad. It also does explosion damage. Don't let this grab fool you. It does a ton of damage, but I've noticed that the effectiveness of this weapon is around 8,000 bar score. Don't go higher than that. Otherwise, you're going to suffer. Durability is quite nice. It does use four energy, but everything else is pretty good. Oh yeah, one negative about this thing. I believe they did change it in the last update. It used to cool down very slow, but I believe they did change that a little bit in the last patch. So other than the fact it cooled down pretty slow, this thing is amazing, but not above 8,000 bar score, unfortunately. So this thing is amazing. You're going to have a ton of fun. Really accurate, really fast firing really good damage but after 8000 bar score you just struggle so i would say it's around here it's pretty amazing but it struggles after 8k bar score next up we have the storm auto cannon i was really blown away by the performance of this thing i mean these things don't exaggerate the fire rate is good effective range is good accuracy is good time to overheat is also pretty good and this thing cooled down pretty fast as well compared to the terms and i would say you would have a very similar experience when using the terms and this thing but somehow this thing does a little bit better because the term feels like a machine gun but it's not a hit scan weapon so it's kind of weird but this one is more like a sniper and in one of my recent videos i even used four of these and it just dealt so much damage. It was so amazing. The time before it overheat is so long. You don't really need any modules. So for me, the storm also gets to sit up here. It is. They both are super duper amazing, but not A rating amazing. <laughs> just B rating amazing. Next up, we have another auto cannon, the Tempest auto cannon. These are tricky. They fire very slow. They're pretty durable, 390 durability, but they fire very slow compared to the storm and they're really inaccurate. So it's um worse than a storm, obviously. And the term is just the durability. That's nice. If you have a chunky build, actually using the Ermac cabin made these feel really amazing because of the durability buff. But other than that, they kind of suck. They are really fun at four to 5,000 power score, but higher than that, you will struggle. It doesn't really have any cool features. It doesn't even have a perk. So for me, the Tempest, they are capable of fun. Using a brick build, these don't feel amazing anymore. Next up, we have the Hulk Cannon, the bigger bro of the little boy cannon. These are only great if you have them fused for extra projectile speed. They almost become like one of those cannons that don't have a firing angle or don't rotate because those are super accurate usually. And the ones that rotate are not that accurate. But if you have them fused for more projectile speed, they become that accurate or almost. So that's the only time these are pretty fun. The spread is still super high on these and the convergence time is not as bad as a little boy, but still pretty horrible. So yeah, these are only great if you have them fused for extra projectile speed. I don't know why they do that for cannons, have the convergence time thingy. It's so annoying. It makes them so annoying to use. So for me, the little boy gets a C rating. But if you have them fused for extra projectile speed, they get a B rating. Next up, we have the Prosecutor 76 millimeter. So basically all the complaints I have with the cannons that can fully rotate, this one doesn't have, which makes these always great. And it also uses less energy. 
Now, recently with the penetration changes, these became super busted OP, but they did nerf it a little bit, so they're not super amazing. If you have three of them, you will get around 700 damage a good hit. It used to be 1300, almost 1500. <laughs> But, you know, it did get nerfed for its rarity. But they're not that bad. They're, 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 they're not bad. You'll, you'll have a ton of fun with this thing if you get them even non-fused. So these definitely get a B rating for me. These are pretty good. These are pretty solid cannons. Next up, we have the median cannon, which is a very unusual cannon. This one is a small caliber cannon. Now, this thing is hard to play. And if you get it at first, you might think it sucks because the reload is just awful that's the biggest issue with this thing that's the biggest con the reload is so slow but it does a ton of damage the durability is also pretty low so those are the biggest cons low durability long reload all the other stats are pretty solid it has high damage very accurate very long range it only uses five energy so you can technically mount three of them and you can fully rotate the weapon as well now personally all the times that i've played the medians beside the first time when it first came out i had a ton of fun so this is the first weapon that is special that gets an a rating for me and it is an event item so you can only craft it when the special event is active raven pad or i don't know what they're called now but those guys or you can buy it off the market now unfortunately the median also doesn't have a perk but it's still a pretty solid weapon Next up, we have the Pyrolid, basically a approved version of the Wasp, and you do notice it. It's slightly more accurate, it has slightly more durability, still uses 4 energy, and it does a decent amount of damage. This thing slaps, actually, way harder than the Wasp, and it also gets a nice perk. Personally, for me, this thing is a brawling weapon, so you need to be a little bit close to your target. I mean, if you were a sniping weapon, I could understand, you know, low durability, because you'll be far away, but 90 durability is not that great. But it's still a pretty good weapon, so this thing gets a B rating for for me as well next up we have the synthesis a energy weapon it is a plasma emitter now all plasma emitters in a game do require a power unit if you want to get the optimal performance out of them so i'm going to basically talk about them as i have a power unit on my build now the synthesis is a pretty strong weapon but it's just a bit difficult to use it has a pretty slow turret rotation speed so you do suffer in that department unless you use it on a hover now this thing has 200 durability but it's not enough it has so many things working on it it's also projectile based it's not hit scan so let's say you go head to head with a sinus build the sinus build will have four sinuses and you will have three synthesis he will strip you way quicker than you can with the synthesis because he's hit scan he has a lot more reach even though he has less durability you're gonna struggle to hit his weapons the synthesis does deal a lot of damage maybe if you have a super low ping you might have a different experience but for me I only have fun when I face bigger targets because, you know, I can land most of my shots then. It is capable of stripping weapons, but it is a lot harder to land your shots. So for me personally, I'm going to have to place it incapable of fun. It is capable of fun. I think it's actually a lot stronger than this, but I, I just don't have that experience with it. And now we have something a little bit more interesting. The Tempura. This is a melee weapon and it does periodic damage. It is tricky to time. But if you can master the timing of this thing, you can deal so much damage and have so much fun. The Tempura is basically a lighter. It only uses three energy. Durability doesn't really matter. You need to hide it in your build. Now, the biggest thing that makes the Tempura high tier is if you have them fused for active time because it makes you chew through the target a little bit longer and dealing so much damage, even if it's for one second only. So for me personally, the Tempura gets an A rating. It is pretty amazing what you can do with this thing. It is super duper fun. Next up, we have the Buzzsaw, a melee weapon. Now this one and the Boar used to be the same rarity, but they moved this one up and it doesn't get a perk, but it does have special features like the Boar, resistance to blast damage, resistance to melee and ram damage, and 100% bonus to ram damage as well. It only costs two energy as well, and it has a lot more durability ability compared to the borer and i never really liked this thing <laughs> until i tried it out <laughs> this thing is disgusting as well it's pretty strong really really strong and you can mount it horizontally or vertically on your build there's not much to say about this one but it is pretty amazing if you haven't tried it <laughs> definitely try it out just like the boar, both are super duper fun and easy to use too okay we're moving on to the drones we have the ad13 hawk which is an upgrade from the falcon which does a lot more damage. I'm not sure if it's double because it does have two machine guns now, but it does way, way more damage. It only uses three energy again, and even though it still flies around you, so it's easy to take out, same flaws as the other one, it does get a little bit more survivability, more durability, and it does way more damage. If you have four arriving around you and going to an unsuspecting target, you will get shredded super fast. With the Falcon, if you do the same, he'll notice it and he'll, he can just drive away. <laughs> But with this one, this one uh, starts to get a little bit scary. So I'm not a fan of drones, but this one is uh, pretty good. 
It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Next up, we have a sidekick drone, the wheel drone. I'm not sure if you guys remember this. Clan Wars used to be overrun by drone builds. Drone builds used to be the meta. These things dealt so much damage. Even the DT Gorbara, the blue one, dealt so much damage. But oh, luckily, they all got nerfed and stuff. And the sidekick also got nerfed pretty heavily, but it is still okay. I think the, the sidekick drone is pretty well balanced. The thing with wheel drones is they're kind of stupid. Their AI is stupid, so it takes a while before they start dealing damage. But once they do, and once they get a lock on you, you will suffer the consequences. So these ones are pretty good. But because of their stupid AI, uh, they get a C rating from me. They're capable of fun. Wheel drones are just stupid in general. They just know. I, I don't know why the devs haven't fixed them. Next up, we have the DT Python, an upgrade from the other one, the blue one. This one, very similar -ish situation, but you know what? You get two guns and you can annoy your teammates as well. Other than that, there's not a lot to say about this. You can spread them around. You can spread them around the cap. Just be super duper annoying. And these are actually more annoying than I want them to be. Personally, don't have enough experience with them, but I would say they are capable of fun. They are capable of fun the drone that has killed me the most are not these not no sidekick no cobra no falcon it's usually the yao guys so these are capable of fun if you have like i, I played four or five a while back a while back and i i was having a blast but you know they're not amazing next up we have the emily revolver it is an uncategorized weapon it fires six high velocity grenades and it does so i think this might be the highest damage dealing special rarity weapon but the thing is when i use three of them it sucks. I, I can never do well. But if I use four of them, the damage output is so great. I do great all the time. So it is tricky. It also has a low durability number. So that's the biggest con. It only has 120 durability, which is very rough. Very, very rough. I believe you can play four of them at 8k power score. That's really where it shines. If you go higher than that, you start to struggle a little bit. So yeah this one is uh tricky it is it is super fun though if you use four in my experience at least so i'm gonna place the emily's at b it is pretty strong it is pretty fun it is almost amazing i would say i would put it here as well it is almost amazing almost amazing the durability is just rough it is also a special event item so you can only craft it when the raven guys are here next up we have a very very underrated weapon which is the summiter uncategorized weapon it is a nail gun this thing is actually really really good but people don't use it for some reason it has two firing modes a sniping mode and a burst shot the range is good the accuracy is pretty good as well and there's nothing really not to like besides the low durability and i believe the weapon rotation speed is also nothing to write home about it is just a solid weapon you can even use four of them without any other modules and you'll still do great of course, there's an upgraded version, the argument, but we'll keep that for the <laughs> next video. But yeah, this one is pretty good as well. So for me, the Summiter gets a B rating as well. It's not amazing, but it is really, really good. So yeah, guys, that was it for this part of the T-list. We did the common weapons, the rare weapons, and the special weapon. It has been very long, and I'll continue the second part, uh, hopefully the next day for you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for part two, and yeah, have a great day. Peace!